Hello and welcome to our lecture on Ajax and JSON. I'm Dr. Earl Severance and I'm your professor and I just want to, I got a nice Father's Day gift from my daughter and so I'm, uh, to, to thank her, I'm wearing it for this particular lecture. So we have been um, doing a whole bunch of stuff with the request response cycle, right? We've, we go in the server, we run through URLs, we run through views, we write templates, we send HTML back and the uh, Browser parses that response and puts it in the document object model. And then most of what we've done has been just sort of fiddling with the document object model with JavaScript. But now we're going to take another important step. And that is, we're going to do things in the document object model and to the document object model where the JavaScript itself is going to make requests to our server code going to run through the views, run through the URLs, and send data back. So the difference is we're not just sending markup back. HTML is our markup format. <clears throat> and JSON is our data format. So the web is pretty old now. We started on 2003. And the, the request response cycle was pretty cool. And lots of software, lots of libraries, lots of languages uh, knew how to talk back and forth across the internet and get data. And the question was is why don't we get something other than HTML? And then the argument became what was the syntax that we should use? And you can look at my shirt here, somewhere here, right there's my shirt. You got some curly braces and then you got some slashes and that actually turned out to be the argument. The argument was whether or not you would use XML, right? Whether you use XML or curly braces. Now XML was the first thing and if we hear the word Ajax, that X stands for XML, but most of the time we are not sending XML back and forth. We're sending JSON back and forth. So the idea of moving data across the network, we had to agree on a, what's called a wire format, or you could think of it as the network, as if we're watching it on a wire and it's going by, what would we actually send? Because in PHP we have arrays, in Python we have dictionaries, in JavaScript we have objects, and Java has things like hash maps and array lists. And the question is, what are we going to send back and forth? We've got to agree on it so that we can write something in Python and read it in JavaScript, and similarly write it in PHP and then read it in JavaScript. So we have to agree on a wire format. And XML is one of the wire formats. We're not going to talk about it because that, that argument is kind of over. Um, XML is not bad for documents at rest, but it's not a real good wire format. So we'll just pretend that JSON is the wire format, even though it is a wire format. The idea is, is that we have to take a structure that's inside a server, and we have to serialize it, which means convert it to a string. So it's a Python dictionary, which is, you know, object-oriented mechanisms that make all this stuff work. And then we have to like say, oh, let's turn this into a string because we have to send characters across the internet. And then when we receive it on the far end, we do what's called deserialize. And the word serial means that we're sending it kind of one character at a time. Back in the old days when we used modems and lease lines and things like that. So see my internet history <laughs> for some of that. So we deserialize it and it becomes sort of an object in JavaScript in this case, if we're going from Python to JavaScript. But the idea is that the wire format is something we agree on, and so it doesn't matter what language we're dealing with. The wire format is something each language has to be able to serialize to send and de deserialize to receive. So I have a video, an interview that I did a long time ago with a fellow named Douglas Crockford. He, he does not claim he's the inventor of JSON. He's just the person who said, wow, this is a really cool format, and let's write it down. And it's really nothing more than a slight adjustment to the object literal notation, meaning the constant, what a constant is in JavaScript when you want to just assign a constant. So we say x equals 2, 2 is that constant, but you can also say x equals curly brace something. And, um, and so he's like, well, why don't we just use this? And he called it JSON and he registered json.org. And it just turns out, I, I, I really wish I knew the extent to which imitating the Python dictionary syntax was part of the goal. In some ways, it's almost more similar to Python dictionary syntax when you're doing uh, key value pairs, uh, when the keys are strings in Python dictionary. So this is some legitimate 
JavaScript code. This is a constant. I could say who equals X, or I could say who equals open curly brace, name colon Chuck, age colon 29, college colon true. You can have strings, integers, booleans. You can have lists, and you can have objects within objects, and lists within objects, and blah, 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 blah. So it's it's a pretty simple syntax. I mean, part of the, part of the thing that uh, Crockford argues is that it's just a syntax that any developer, if left alone long enough, would, would just invent it. And I have to agree with that. I have to say that this syntax, I, I, can't, I can't say, whoa, I don't like this. I wish I could improve on it somehow. So the JSON syntax is a, it's not exactly the same as the JavaScript syntax. It's kind of like, let's keep it simple and have a subset of the JavaScript object literal syntax. And so I've got to sample some sample code that you can go play with. And all it does is it says who equals open curly brace, blah, 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 exactly the code I showed you before in console.log it. That's all it does. It doesn't print it. It doesn't send it across the network. It doesn't do anything. It just console.logs it. And you see that that is the way we define a constant object. An object is a constant. And so, um, but that's not so interesting. What is more interesting is when we can produce code inside of the server in, say, Python, and then send it to a browser. So here we have a very simple view, uh, and the sample code is up there on djfree.com for you to look at. And we are going to have a JSON fun uh, path. This is going to be a, a function style view. Uh, time sleep is just so that when you play with a sample, you can kind of, it pauses for just a moment. Um, normally you wouldn't pause. So we just construct a dictionary. That's a Python dictionary. And again, wow. It looks a lot like a JavaScript object, but if you do it in PHP, it looks quite different. If you do it in Java, it looks quite different. But it turns out in Python and, and JavaScript, they're very similar. And then we're returning JSON response of, and then handing that dictionary. Now, normally, when we have a normal uh, HTML page, we're sending back an HTTP response, and we're sending a string back. But this time, we're sending a JSON response, and we're sending an object back. Django sees JSON response and says, I'm going to set the headers the right way. I'm going to serialize this and I'm going to send this thing out as a string. And so if you go to this endpoint, JSON fun, and you look at it in raw data, you see that it's been compressed into a string. You know, with cur that's really curly brace and double quote, yada, yada. Now you also see your browser sometimes shows it parsed, meaning it's showing it after parsing. So you can see the raw data before parsing, and then you can actually see the JSON data after parsing. It, it's kind of the same thing. It's just one's a string and one is an object. And part and parcel of moving JSON back and forth to the browser is you got things like the content type, which is application slash JSON rather than text slash HTML. And then there's other things like uh, content size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So up, that's about all there is to JSON. It's, it's so simple, it's so elegant. So up next, we're gonna talk about uh, doing a chat app, which really brings together a lot of this JavaScript, JavaScript objects, JavaScript in the browser, and JSON.